This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Mile High Ambulance. The Emergency Medical Minute is excited to announce that we are now offering AMA, PRA, Category 1 credits. This is accessible through our online course modules that can be accessed at www.emergencymedicalminute.org backslash CME dash courses, or simply by clicking on the link in our show notes and creating an account. I was going to present a brief case today of a patient that presented to their emergency department, a 28-year-old female that came in with sort of subacute symptoms of lower abdominal pain. So three, four days of mostly right lower quadrant pain with tenderness in the right lower quadrant. So as far as sort of a broad differential, some of the things to consider there are things like appendicitis, ovarian pathology like cysts, torsion, infections, things like PID, kidney stones, UTI. So as far as sort of components of the history or exam that you'd want to know a little more about, what are some of the things that would be relevant to get from the history? Right. Last period. Periods have been regular. No abnormal flow. She's not known to be pregnant. We would check, obviously, a pregnancy test, and the patient was non-pregnant. Other symptoms like fevers, diarrhea. Yeah. So clearly associated symptoms like fever, gastrointestinal symptoms, general urinary symptoms, and then vaginal symptoms. So tolerating orals but anorectic. You know, so nausea but no vomiting. No change in bowel or bladder habits. No particular recollected painful intercourse or particular vaginal discharge. So a lot of tenderness on exam. CT was warranted based on consideration for, among other things, rule out appendicitis. And then this was the CT, which shows a large complex cystic structure low in the pelvis. Ends up being characterized as an abscess. So as far as the differential diagnosis of an abscess in that area, Things to consider would be things like diverticular abscess, appendicitis, ruptured appendix and abscess, or a tubo ovarian abscess. In terms of differentiating the three, uh, generally the radiologist can do a good job. Diverticulosis uh, is generally seen if you have history of apparent diverticulitis, appendicolith, or uh, thickened appendix. In this case, this was diagnosed as a tubo ovarian abscess. So as far as that clinical manifestation of a relatively common disease, a TOA is a rare complication, uh, but it's important. It is one of the indications for hospitalization. And in terms of treatment, about 60 to 80% in terms of the studies, just get better on IV antibiotics. So that's usually cefoxetin or cefotetan, which are cephalosporins that have anaerobic coverage, uh, and then doxycycline, IV, Plinda and Gent. The mortality of this ends up being relatively high. They can get septic and it's up to 5%. It's a relatively uncommon complication or progression of a relatively common disease. So one of the reasons why we have a low threshold to treat for PID is associated with morbidity and mortality. So have a low threshold to treat. Anyone have any questions on that? We'd like to thank our sponsor, Health One Continental Division and Swedish Medical Center for their financial contributions to the EMM. Donations from them and listeners like you make it possible for us to fulfill our mission of producing and spreading free medical education to the masses. If you enjoy our show, please consider making a one-time or reoccurring donation to help cover our operational costs and keep the EMM awesome. Click on the link in our show notes to make a donation. Thank you for listening.